Hi, I'm Curtis. I'm here with Kyle. He's our product applications tech. And today he's going to share five tips for operating and maintaining your temperature controller. There are three things that affect separation, and those are time, pressure, and heat. Today we're going to talk about identifying and troubleshooting issues when your temperature controller is not working correctly. If you're on site, you're almost guaranteed to see a temperature controller sticking out of a vessel. Now Kyle, these are designed to vent intermittently, but let's say I'm walking around on my site and I realize there's a hissing noise coming from my temperature controller, mm -hmm. and it's because it's venting continuously. What's going on? So the first thing you want to check is where you're getting your supply gas from. You want to make sure it's from a high and dry spot. Uh, if there's any liquids or trash in the supply gas, it could clog up the pilot plug and keep it from seeding off. Okay, so I've checked. The supply gas is coming from the top of my vessel. I'm pretty sure it's clean gas. What's the next thing to look for? So at that point, if you're sure you have clean gas, uh, it might be something internally with the temperature controller that's going on. Uh, it might be a blown diaphragm, a weak pilot spring, or an O-ring that's been cut. You can get a repair kit. Uh, when you take it out of the vessel, it comes apart easy. Uh, you can put all the repair parts in it and put it back together and get going again. Just right on site? Yep. Okay, if I'm going to repair this thing, obviously I'm going to have to blow down my vessel, right? Not always. If you have a thermal well like I have here, uh, this allows uh, removal of your T12, and you can do any repairs you want to on it and then reinsert it without having to blow down your vessel. Okay, so this will let me maintain pressure in my vessel? Absolutely. And show us how it works. Yeah, so how this senses temperature through the thermal well is this will be filled with high temperature grease. So when you're done repairing your T12 and you put it back in your thermal well, the high temperature grease helps transfer the heat to the probe, sensing the temperature. Let's look at another problem, Kyle. Let's say I have a temperature controller on my reboiler in my glycol system and I've got it set at 275 degrees, but my temperature gauge on the reboiler is reading 350. What's going on with the variance there? So there you're not submerged completely in your glycol. Um, the, maybe you had glycol loss over the system over time, uh, and that level has lowered below the probe, and it's not reading accurately. Okay, so I need to check in my sight glass and see where my glycol level is. Yeah. Okay, what about uh, if I have a, a gas line that's smaller than the probe, what do I do? So if you're reading the temperature of gas, uh, you want to make sure that the entire length of the probe is in the process flow. One way you can do that is uh, maybe put, it, uh, put a T in the line, and that way you can insert the probe in the full length of your pipeline. Last problem, Kyle. Let's say I'm seeing erratic temperature swings inside my production vessel. What could be the issue there? So it could be a bent probe. This is a very sensitive probe. Uh, if the outside stainless steel tube gets bent and comes into contact with the bimetal uh, that's inside, that could be where you're getting the erratic temperature change. So before installation, uh, you want to make sure that you're not holding it by the probe because uh, this end is very heavy and that could weigh it down and bend it. Uh, you want to make sure that you're just handling it very carefully. In that case, is it repairable? No. If you try to bend it back into place, uh, you'll end up damaging it even more. Uh, at that point, it's just time to replace. All right, thanks, Kyle. Hope you enjoyed these Kimray quick tips. We'll see you next time.